नमस्ते दोस्तों इन दिस एपिसोड वी हैव विद अस मोनिका मेहता हु इज करेंटली द को फाउंडर एंड सी ई ओ एट जेल्थ जेल्थ इज़ अ हेल्थ टेक स्टार्टअप बेस्ड आउट ऑफ सिंगापुर इस वीडियो में हमने काफ़ी डिटेल में उनकी पूरी जर्नी को डिस्कस करा है आई एम श्योर यू विल लव द कॉन्वर्जेशन एंड इफ यू आर सम वन हु इज़ प्लानिंग टू स्टार्ट योर ओन वेंचर इन सम नियर फ्यूचर देन दिस एपिसोड इज़ गोइंग टू गिव यू रियली रियली इंसाइटफुल टिप्स एज वेल एज वैल्यूज सो मे श्योर दैट यू watch this video till the very end and if you are new to the channel make sure that you hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon before you move ahead with this video the podcast starts in 3 2 1 so i was going through your linkedin profile and maine dekha uh, correct me if i am wrong you uh, joined hindu college back in 2007 right 2008 yes 2008 and most of the things jo aapke profile mein tha that was related to medical field only but there were two years one was 2017 when you did a business development internship and then in 2019 you joined i guess some startup in entrepreneur in residence role or some other thing so tell me something about that ki medical se ekdam se wahan jaane ka kaise aapne decide kar so basically aisa tha ki the reason, okay i'll tell you much before that right growing up i just had interest in biology like and nobody in my family was a doctor and everybody okay. was like everybody is engineer or or they are either farmers or who edu- who managed to get education they are all engineers but mere ko is lagta tha ki no i used to fall sick and i even through my childhood like i used to feel ki like, why i have to take this medicine who is deciding i have to take this <laughs> medicine so that's how i started getting interest in biology and then in and then eventually like uh, even when i had to go for like mbbs or this thing i had an option to go to pgi or manipal but my family we had a decision like i realized i don't see myself spending 9 years trying to do mbbs md this and that and then set up my hospital and i was scared of even entering a hospital but i just Got loved it. biology i had no idea okay. i was like i was in sirsa it's in haryana i had no idea uh, what are the potential options i never even had access to internet until 2009 So my first okay. time I used it was when I actually went to Delhi. So then my uncle told me that, "Ha, you can join this college. You have good grades. You'll be able to get here." I'm like, "Okay, cool, thick hair." So I just joined, and then after that, it was like a, a organic transition. Then there, from there, I went to IISC. Then I got interested in how research happens, how things happen. Okay. And that's that's when subconsciously I started getting interested in uh, inventing something or innovating something to some extent. So that and then I went for my master's and that's why I went to NUS for my PhD. When I went to NUS that time, I got exposed to entrepreneurship. Like they okay. had a lot of boot camps, and that was my first experience to what entrepreneurship is. But still, it was very very deep tech driven. They were uh, uh, their focus was on that whatever you are doing in your lab, whatever you are trying to spend four five years in your PhD, try to commercialize that. Got But it. It was not, in terms of the market readiness. Those things that we develop in lab, it is way beyond what can actually be commercialized. It will take another ten, fifteen years. But doing those boot camps gave me a good idea about you know uh, how things happen. So, but that still gave me idea from the technical side. So I needed to understand how things happen from the business side, and I had no idea about it. So that's when I I joined uh, like as an as an intern during my PhD. My boss hated it. I did not tell him <laughs> because I had to spend time in my internship. So I just right. joined uh, one of my senior. She is now actually CEO of Shiok Meats. It's a very big oh, company wow. now. So uh, and so she is also like a scientist come entrepreneur. So I joined her at just a couple of months. I was trying to learn. You know, she was going for VC meeting. So I'll just go and understand. Uh, uh, just take the context. and just to understand oh, that was my hmm. first exposure i didn't know what vc was what vc meant so that was <laughs> I, i started reaching out to people giving uh, we were actually building a platform which can help researchers or phd's give anonymous rating to their pi's because it was a major problem so okay. people <laughs> interesting so and then mm-hmm. and that that that's how it started and then there were other uh, some other verticals in terms of the things that you need in lab reagents chemicals things like that you could see what is it more more like a forum discussion forum where you can talk with anybody in the world who's doing the research so it was like different things that we were trying out but it gave me a good idea about how things are and of mm-hmm. course that i didn't go really well there were we don't get any uh, good response from vcs so that was also good learning and but anyway that was during i was doing phd and then my the pressure of finishing phd because my scholarship was ending came so i kind of like stopped that internship and then after that i worked for like one two years and then during those two years i realized that i'm not enjoying the work that i'm doing 
I'm doing it fine, but I'm not really enjoying it. And I don't see myself spending 10 years of my life or 20 years of my life continuing the same work. And that's okay. when uh, Singapore had a lot of these entrepreneur programs, especially for scientists. So that is something I loved about that place. And that's when I got into Entrepreneur First, which is where we basically... Uh, it was about you know uh, working on some idea related to your field more about deep tech pitching to investors so that's how my journey started like I, it was a steep learning curve i did not even know how to calculate market size okay so, and, and where were you working at before joining entrepreneur first so i i was working in a company called chugai pharma it's under roche group basically it's a pharma okay. company so i okay. was working there as a senior scientist i was again it was pretty much into research come strategy but more about we were developing some drugs for cancer got it got it and uh, aapne ye mention kiya na bhi jo aapka aapke jo professor the uh, basically he asked you to uh, kind of invent something that can be commercialized at nus right this not my professor but it was like the entire nus environment like they have this Got thing it. you know they have programs honestly my boss is like really the best boss but he was he still not into commercializing thing he's still a very very typical researcher that you know karo hmm. publish karo karo publish karo he's like that hmm. but uh, overall nus has like the entrepreneur uh, program where they are trying to come up because they have pretty good research that goes on into the lab but i think it's commercialized so these program overall uh, you know they have opened some centers which are trying to uh, incentivize even professors to convert their research to something commercialized that can be commercialized okay so ye 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 kafi achhi cheez hai this i think is miss, very much missing in india kyunki yahan par bahut research papers publish hote hain in fact wo bhi kafi kam hi rehte hain but like i think hardly anything is being able to be converted into something commercial or some product that can be uh, gotten out into the market Oh. Yeah, that is there. That is there. And Singapore government is putting lot of money into deep tech research because it takes like at least five to six years to build the product. So you will not have product. You will not have revenue. So you need, but hmm. you need uh, money that that should be flowing in. Right. So right. government a lot of money to uh, promote deep tech startups. Right. So right now, do you identify yourself more as a researcher or as an entrepreneur? No, no, definitely as an entrepreneur. <laughs> okay, and when uh, you had entered into NUS, तब तक तो आपने ज़्यादा कुछ entrepreneurial नहीं करा था. You were uh, majorly studying biology at different levels in different universities. So did you expect that ऐसा कुछ होने वाला है? Like ये front भी खुल जाएगा. और जब वो खुला, so uh, was there any resistance from your within कि क्या मुझे इधर जाना चाहिए या फिर मुझे नहीं जाना चाहिए? I should stick to research part. What was your uh, mindset during that time? so basically i came across when i was in masters uh, i think hamara do credit ka ek subject tha bio entrepreneurship that was the okay. first sub- first time i heard this name as bio entrepreneurship and that was hmm. in my final semester but usme we had like hamari university mein ek professor aate the bahar se and he was i think working in uh, dr reddy's lab so wo hame kuch kuch batate the like he told us basics of how drug discovery happens things like that it was still more from medical back side not really like entrepreneurship side but that that i really enjoyed those lectures i don't hmm. think i i enjoyed anything else matlab it just i just realized ki i do like uh, thinking about how to build things i was never good in business and i'm still not i need people you know who can you know, who I look for people who are good in sales who can help me with things but my stronger point is really uh, Dig, digging deeper into whatever medical related problems are and understanding each and everything about that and coming up with potential solutions so that was my uh, major uh, <clears throat> i would say strong point and even when i went to my phd though it was research but my research my four years was about i basically developed one technique it will be too technical if i start explaining but in layman terms i developed a technique which is like uh, like like how you cook food right how you how you make maggi you have particular steps similarly i did the technique through which we were studying uh, some activity in the cells which is responsible for uh, making the cell cancerous okay and previously there was no way to study that inside the cell we were all, the other available techniques where you have to kill the mouse you have to get the cells or make it artificial all those kind of things but right. those things were not very accurate uh, it cannot simulate what actually happens inside when the cell is inside the living body got it so got i it. Actually, i actually optimized that troubleshooted that for two years and then after that we successfully developed a technique through which we could do it like more like in vivo inside the cell when it is like in the in the in the mice so and that became pretty good and we managed to publish in nature pns all those kind of things but and 
I realized that I actually enjoyed discovering that process more than anything else that I did in my PhD. After we discovered that, that was like a prerequisite for me for my project to even get started. But okay. after we yeah, then uske baad I had to use that on different things and generate results. That was not interesting for me. So that is why in my first two years, I realized I like doing this. So that that's when I started looking for opportunities where I get to I get a chance to you know develop something new. So got that's it, how it actually it. started. It was more like a I would say uh, just understanding yourself what you like more by doing it. Right, right. I I, ultimately, it boils down to awareness. Correct, correct, correct. Hmm. I do not have that awareness if I have to say it that way. No, but I, I think if like you it. okay. But uh, like, even if you were aware that you didn't have that awareness, it it is again a kind of awareness that you know that you don't have complete awareness. So again, it, I, it's I a, was very clear. I was very clear that I don't want to go for postdoc research forever. Okay. That I was very clear from my like first year, pretty much. I saw the environment and I I just did not see myself there. Hmm. It did not. I was never motivated enough to be in the lab. I like talking to people. I like discussing things, and I realized that it's not going to work. So okay. that's how I think that awareness I had. But finding hmm. out this that okay, this is what I like. That probably came one after the other as things. Interesting, happened. interesting. So Monica, uh, now let's talk about Zelt. Zelt start. How did it Was there a major event that uh, led you to decide that let's start something to, to help cancer patients? So just run us, run me through the whole journey. कि कैसे आपको idea आया, कैसे you took the first step, what was the first step, and everything. Sure. So basically, honestly, like I had a few events that happened in my family. Like 2019 was pretty unfortunate from that aspect. Like I lost my Thai ji, very very close to me, just like my mother and also my cousin sister. And then, दोनों cases में I observed one common thing. Um, they had like symptoms like. कॉमन सा सिम्टम है स्वेलिंग है फीवर है बट आप लाइक आस पास में डॉक्टर के पास चले गए उसने दवाई दे दी बोल दिया कि चलो आप दैट स्ट्रेस होगा फैमिली का स्ट्रेस वट एवर स्ट्रेस यू हैव एंड देन दैट कंटिन्यूड एंड देन दे नेवर एक्चुअली वेंट एंड गॉड अ प्रॉपर डायग्नोसिस कभी जाके प्रॉपर सिटी स्कैन नहीं कराया एम आर आई नहीं कराया क्योंकि डॉक्टर ने भी कभी नहीं बोला एंड देन देवर कि हाँ अरे जस्ट स्वेलिंग ही तो है फीवर ही तो है मे बी वो बीज है उसकी वजह से होगा मे बी चलो कुछ हमने गलत खा लिया उसकी वजह से होगा तो सेल्फ टाइम से चलता रहा एंड देन सेम थिंग एंड देन देवर टॉक टेकिंग मेडिसिन स्टिल इट विल कम बैक बट एंड देन सडनली वट हैपन इन मार्च my at least for my thai ji one morning she just got like severe stomach pain and then very next day like she had to we had to take her to multiple hospitals so like humse nahi hoga just take her next one next one next one kar kar ke hum ludhiana le gaye wahan pe finally wahi hua ki uh, doctor said ki inka intestinal blockage hai and we cannot do anything hmm. uh, she might be surviving for few hours she might be surviving for few months we cannot say anything but oh. after few hours she passed away and it was very sudden like for us it was very sudden ki hua kya and then uh, same thing happened with my sister as well and then one thing and i was in singapore i couldn't uh, like go at that time i had just joined another new company i had no leave finally when i went to uh, when i uh, talked to the doctor over phone one thing that he told me was are ma'am aapko to pata hi hai yahan pe india mein log symptoms hote hain google se search karte hain hamare paas aate hi tab hai jab late ho jate hain fir wo hame bolte hain ki aapne kuch nahi kiya and then i realized ki that is so true and then i started observing this more and more it was already there i just never thought it is a problem i never looked hmm. carefully into the and right. then even thing happened and then that was the time it stuck but i had just joined the company i wasn't sure if i should leave but i was not happy and then finally i got the chance to join ef so i thought chalo theek hai now is the time i don't think kabhi ek ideal time aayega when you'll be mentally prepared so let's just do it so that's how i left the job and i wasn't very happy there I left the job and I went to EF. I just I wasn't sure what I'm supposed to do, how I have to do. It was just a leap of faith. कि ठीक है कुछ नहीं पता business का क्या करना है कैसे करना है. But I think we will learn. One thing we are like we will learn. जैसे भी होगा good or bad we will learn and we will make it happen. So then we joined EF and I was lucky to find Thiraj there. So Thiraj had also joined that program and we started talking and then that's how we had he had also worked in like he was. one of those rare engineers who had worked in healthcare field and who was oh, generally wow. interested in healthcare field so we both started talking and then after a couple of weeks we started working together we did not actually uh, boil down to this problem first it was really about ki we'll figure out what we want to do 
and we'll talk to people first idea we had was like you no know, predicting response to therapies which which therapy like because unlike uh, it's not like everybody has fever they take paracetamol they are fine cancer right. may it's really personalized what might work on one lung cancer patient of the same stage might not work for another lung cancer patient so it is like very very personalized so we wanted we, uh, first idea was you know uh, predicting response to what treatment will work for the cancer the cancer patient but then that was a very naive thing when we started with we had no data we had no we i had an idea how to do it but we needed data to do that and then ibm watson was doing the same thing uh, and they had failed significantly and that was okay. the first question we were getting from all the uh, all the investors and we had no idea but mm-hmm. then it was good thing it was a, it was a good uh, eye opening thing We were in our own bubble. Ki ha ha, we are doing it. We are doing it. The moment you go and talk to investors, and that was the first time in my life I'm actually pitching to an investor. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> that is this. This is the reality check. And that's when we decided, okay, let's take a step back. We are very naive. And then we started talking to more and more people, more and more, uh, you know, entrepreneurs who have done this uh, thing. And then we pivoted to something else. And then we again pivoted to something else. We just tried whatever ideas were coming to our mind. but okay. as an early stage in as an early stage startup you have the luxury of you know trying things and moving fast and then finally what happened was we actually raised our pre seed money for uh, ai for pathology basically ai for cancer diagnosis but then what happened covid hit in 2020 we had we just got the money in march and then uh, around march april covid started like almost started to go towards its peak in india Correct. and then we realized people have entire healthcare problems and everything shifted towards covid and then what we were doing initially for the cancer diagnosis it was not something very innovative honestly like ai for cancer diagnosis to get the data train the system get the diagnosis better and many people were doing that but we just thought ki india mein there is a scope so we were planning to do it but as covid hit we realized there are bigger problems out there and then uh, the same thing i started observing what happened uh, like a few months back with my aunt and my sister same thing is happening now with people who are suffering from covid and then we were just talking to one of one of the hospital that we were in touch with and then they told ki first of all there are so many patients we hardly have doctors doctors ko patients keep calling and asking ki sir fever ho gaya ye ho gaya wo ho gaya kya karu and at the same time what happens is i am here i have no idea about what patient is saying i can't look at his health data whatever he is telling me on phone i can't trust it right. and then for me they just keep calling me i i don't know how to manage so many patient i haven't slept from so many days and then we asked them okay then he was like ki i'll be happy to work with you guys if you can solve this problem and then we thought ki okay this is our fourth pivot but is it really is it just this doctor or is it just covid or can it actually survive post covid so that was the first question that you were trying to figure out and then we actually reached out to many doctors we did many uh, cold calls we talked to a lot of doctors and we realized there is a gap in the healthcare space where you know doctors are extremely overburdened and they have no resources and time to manage their outpatients once they leave the hospital and and for the patient side what happens is they have no means or how, how to manage their condition you know ek bar kisi ko cancer ho gaya ya kuch bhi covid bhi ho gaya whatever condition any chronic condition happens it huh. it is very it is a lifelong thing you have many things to take care of whether right. it's medication it's your symptom management and not everybody has their doctor's contact even if they have contact doctor is like extremely frustrated with all the 30 40 whatsapp messages and report that the patient sends so we wanted to streamline this process so we started with that and we thought ki theek hai uh, we wanted to see is it like a good to solve problem is like must solve problem initially at that time we realized we don't know uh, we don't have the answer but we just started we thought okay let's go with the users we started talking focused on more and more doctors more and more patient and we realized there is a gap which can potentially be solved and that's how we came up with the idea of remote monitoring where patients once they are home we will we track their symptoms their entire information and using our algorithms based on their condition we tell them what they need to do and all this we keep them connected to their doctor all this data we send to their doctor so that okay. they also know what happening to their patient even if the patient is at home and patient feels more connected to the doctor so that and we were ju- i was just thinking that you know if this thing actually something like this actually existed even for my aunt when she had actually gone to a doctor she doctor would know what is happening to her at any given time 
and she he could see the trend that okay this is not improving and and then if the system can actually show it is potentially serious and it will actually suggesting you need to do the test now it would have potentially made some difference so that's right. that's how it actually started and it is really about timely interventions which can which impact the outcome only timely intervention can solve the can solve uh, any such medical related problems so that's how we started and yeah that's how basically we uh, started as and that's when we went to vice and all those things happened now the vision has definitely changed to something much bigger and now it's not just about managing cancer or managing a condition it's really about empowering every individual in the world with a digital healthcare access so but we are building this now we want to address why just cancer we hmm. should focus on even before they got diagnosed with cancer anybody right. in the world, they are able to you know use mobile order food order cab why can't they just go to the mobile app put the symptoms put whatever information just like a virtual doctor and get some idea about you know what it can be like a differential diagnosis and understand what they need to do now all hmm. in a very engaging and empowering manner so that is what we are trying to do uh, it's a long journey it just started so yeah trying to okay. learn a lot right right very very interesting so jitna mai samajh paya abhi tak so basically agar mujhe summarize karna hai is puri cheez ko that what you are doing right now so you are trying to provide each and every person especially patients with a doctor 24/7 aur wo sirf unse contact mein nahi rahega balki ek real time symptom monitoring bhi chalti rahegi jisse patient ki condition ka real time doctor ko pata chalta rahe that how is the patient doing what is what might he be facing or yeah so basically that is correct and what happens is uh, we have added one more layer for engagement over it now what we do okay. is we give personalized uh, video based content in terms of let's say somebody has some symptoms or we have already connected them with the doctor but at the same time what can they actually do to be better we saw that basically we were uh, keeping the remote monitoring thing it was it is basically it is impactful but from the patient side we need to make it more engaging we need to incentivize them put do it more regularly put the symptoms more regularly and right. that is like a human behavior so incentivizing them what kind of what is the outcome they are looking for so based hmm. on the feed we started making it more like a holistic instructions as well okay okay and you mentioned about that ef program where you met dheeraj so tell me something about ki kya tha wo program and like what it was all about how did you get into that how did you get to know about it so basically ef is uh, it's like they call themselves a talent company where the their pitches that there are many ambitious people in the world who don't do who can build great things but okay. they don't have a platform to do that and they don't have the right people whom they can build it with okay. that is their hypothesis and they started in london actually for, in 20 13 or 2014 and they moved to and they started another batch basically they moved to singapore in 2015 or 2016 and okay. they had and their pitch was around basically going and finding phd's because their Got idea it. was that there are many good phd's who are building things but they are not uh, actually creating the impact as much as they can so that was their hypothesis and so they had moved to uh, singapore and they were reaching out to people in nus so i i i was already contacted by them when i was in my third year but i was not i wasn't very sure so i thought that i want to get some experience in the industry before doing this so that's when i i was already in touch in 2020 2019 again uh, we were we connected and they're like okay join now i was like okay now i think it's the right time so that's how i joined and the way they work is they take like a Uh, they have different cohorts. Like I think in our time it was eighty people uh, from thirty okay. different countries. They take like a very diverse cohort. So they'll have people coming in from engineering background, from like deep tech background, and they'll have people coming from business background, and everybody from different different geographies to make it as diverse as possible. So that is where Dheeraj also came for that program, and I was also there. So it just happened, uh, and Dheeraj had come. So Dheeraj had come more from this. Uh, mindset that he he is more of a person whose skill sets can be used in any field because okay. he's a computer engineer and data scientist but then he he also tried working with other people i also tried working with other people the way ef works is like a speed dating but okay. you are speed dating for finding the right founder hmm. so you find the concept is that don't go on the idea idea will change but as a founder you need to stick together for 20 30 years so right. 
it's like a marriage it's like a professional marriage so find the person you can actually work with without getting irritated who can respect you and who can respect your the mismatch in understanding mismatch in thought process so do, you will have difference in uh, opinion but you can you should be able to talk about that respectfully so find that right co-founder so initial the program is like 8 to 10 weeks initial 4 5 weeks is about finding the right co-founder so how you do is like say you talk to everyone you figure out that maybe you're vibing with 10 people try working with them speed date break up break up break up there's a break up week that we celebrate okay like how many <laughs> breaks we had so that's it it's quite fun and then after that if you stick together and then you uh, and the mentors there they are actually judging you i mean in a way they are observing you and judging you as an individual how you think how you work with people and then they also are seeing you know, how how you are uh, how much progress you are making at a personal and professional level in terms of ideation in terms of understanding how entrepreneurship works and then they have some point system for each of these aspects and that's Got how it. they decide either to fund you or not fund you so okay, that is okay. how it is quite and, interesting it is very different and do they charge any fees as well to get into one of the cohorts no 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 they pay you because oh, okay. they, they are very selective so it's like very very selective process so they will basically pay you at our time it uh, depends on which region they are they used to pay like 5000 dollars a month because they expect you to leave the job and come Got and it. you are you are also taking a risk and you are right. not sure whether you will get funded because only 20% people get funded so other six you have to go back or either continue and on, on their own so that's right, why right. so they pay you for the first Three months that you are in the program, and if you get funded, then you have the funding. If not, then anyway, you have to leave the program. Okay. So if anyone wants to apply for the program, so what's the process like? उनकी वेबसाइट पे जाके रजिस्टर करना है. Just अब तो ये Bangalore में भी है. Oh. Now they're in Bangalore. Yeah. Okay. It's called entrepreneurship. It's similar to Antler. I don't know if you have heard about Antler. Right. So Antler is also a concept. So they are like two competitors. Okay. Antler was uh, EF was at least a, a couple of years back. They were more focused on deep tech. Antler hmm. was more focused on like YC type, you know, who are like Haan. a proper business. So that for that got was the but otherwise it's a similar concept. Antler okay. also you go and join as an individual, then uh, find a team, uh, go for the IC. Same. Thing. Right, right. Okay. I personally like Antler more. Okay. And Monica, you have told me that when you pitched your first investor to pitch your idea, so that was kind of an eye-opener thing. So, tell me a little bit about that. So, tell me about that. So, basically, regarding that, right? What was the eye-opener thing? So, basically, on my day one of EF, I was like, I was like, So, basically, on my day one of EF, that was my first, you know, I, I, it was very, I was overwhelmed by the kind of people that were there. Because until then, I was, I was exposed to people if, in the medical field. Hmm. and they were really smart people and but still i was never exposed to you know somebody who is coming with like 10 years of experience in netflix and hmm. for for me that entire diversity in a in a room was very overwhelming to, okay but okay. and then and i was in my own bubble ki ha hum ye karenge ye karenge sab kuch medical related right hmm. and i knew ef is more about go for the boot shots and i took okay. it literally मैंने जाके हमारा फर्स्ट डे था आई थिंक आई पोस्टेड दैट लिंक इन लास्ट ईयर इट वाज माय फर्स्ट डे एंड व्हाट आई डिड दे आस्क की अच्छा व्हाट इज इट दैट यू वांट टू वर्क ऑन सम ब्रांड व्हाटएवर यू हैव इन माइंड एंड आई टोल्ड द इन्वेस्टर दैट ही वाज लाइक द मेन इन्वेस्टर हु एक्चुअली कम्स लेटर ऑन बट ही हैड कम फॉर वन वन सेशन एंड आई टोल्ड हिम आई वांट टू बिल्ड अ सिस्टम सो आई हैड वर्कड ऑन दिस इम्यून प्रोफाइलिंग व्हिच इज मोर अबाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग योर इम्यून सिस्टम फॉर वेरियस डिजीजेस सो उस टेक्निक को इम्यून प्रोफाइलिंग बोलते हैं एंड इट इज वेरी न्यू सो आई हैड इट्स लाइक रियली रियली न्यू वेरी फ्यू पीपल इन द लैब्स डू इट सो आई टोल्ड हिम आई I want to build this system to tell which people are no, out of all the people which human beings are fit to go to space. Oh, it was a, okay. I was reading something about space, and I it came across this is a big problem. Hmm. And I, I just dig deeper, and then I thought, "Are we going to say yoga? We will tell you who can go to space, who cannot go to space." And I just had this thing in my mind, and I hmm. just told him, and I told him, and he was like, "Hmm, good idea, but first come down to earth. Let's do something." Else. <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like oh shit <laughs> and then and i was like okay and then he told me ki see then later on he called me and he is like ki dekho uh, i i like your ambition but you know hmm. the reality is that this is not how business happens and you know how go for the 
first he explained me what mvp is how to test it you know things like that so he was like he literally sat with me for a long time and he explained me if you are if you actually want to do this think about what problem can you solve this while you are on earth okay if you are <laughs> if you want to call for people going on everest mm-hmm. can you actually do that so we didn't deeper and you know that entire thought process and how to think from actually practical point of view and business point of view that was my first time in my life right and that's when i start because usse pehle it was more about ki ha hum ye banayenge ye banayenge uske aage kya kabhi nahi socha hmm. so this was a reality check and it was a very good experience in terms of thinking ki ha ye to tumhare mind mein hai now do people actually want it how are you actually going to translate it to something which is really impactful and how are you going to convert into a business how are you going to get users how big can you be all those things i never thought about so it came only after start only when i started talking to these people as part of the program so it was Got a it. very good for me it was like a mini mba program for me hmm. so it it just happened that way uske baad funding kaise rahi iski thodi se is pe baat karte hain that how did you apply to y combinator or आपने और भी किसी इन्वेस्टर्स के साथ पिचिंग करी उनके साथ क्या एक्सपीरियंस रहा एंड एंड फॉर सो बेसिकली हाउ डिड यू रेज योर फर्स्ट राउंड ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड एवरीथिंग अच्छा तो बेसिकली अ फर्स्ट राउंड ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट केम फ्रॉम एंटर बिफोर वाईसी एंड एंटर में इट वाज मोर लाइक it is more like you know not giving up so i'll tell you and angler wala story so we went to ef right and upon a first where me and he started working together and then we both were working with different people initially i okay. was working with three people he was working with somebody else and then we decided then that did not work out and by that time me and he had become pretty good friends we okay. were at the end then we were discussing our frustrations but we never thought mm-hmm. we would work together yeah. but then at the end of that i think it was like one week two weeks before uh, ic ic is like investment committee okay where you have to pitch your product basically you have to pitch your idea with some traction things like that and we thought here kuch to time nahi hai so why hmm. don't we only try working together because we realized ki more than idea now it's really about finding the right person and that's when it was it was like theek hai chalo abhi hum hi try kar lete hain because we had become good friends by then and then we started working together and then we did not really have much you know uh, that uh, we were working on that idea of response to uh, who will what therapy is the best for the individual cancer patient who would respond to what therapy that was what we were working on okay. and then we were just trying to figure out the data get the data to you know even build some mvp but we did not have much we managed to get then we applied somewhere in nih in some uh, in us so i applied as a researcher and then we managed to get some like it was like 1500 patients data it was a lot of data like 5 tb of data we got from there oh, so wow. we had to send drive and we had to send the hard disk and get the hmm. data and all that so it was quite fun and but by that time our ic was there we did not have much and then we decided to okay, let's not raise money now um, so we we met in an ef we went to the program but we did not raise money from ef we took okay. our time we got the data uh, in december and then we took like another two months to build some mvp out of it we built that and then in february we went to antler and by that time so i'll tell you from my personal side my family my parents they have no idea about business and they were like ki kya stupid ladki hai itna padha likh pad likh ke acha karke abhi naukri chhod ke baithi hai singapore mein kaha aisa khali baithi hai unko lagta hai khali baithi because they're not getting monthly payment means you're khali baithe ho right so that is how it was in my family at least and then they were like ki pehle tune bola tha ef se paisa milega aap to ef se nahi mila unne bola humne nahi chahiye hame ef se but unko nahi samajh aa raha hai wo sab unke liye hai ki salary you were getting salary now you are not getting it so they were like ki nahi chalega if you want to stay in singapore you should get uh, you should get another job so mere pe bahut pressure tha ki you know go for a get a job get a job get a job and mera aisa ho gaya tha for almost two months i was trying to avoid talking to my family okay. because i was getting irritated and i i was already stressed out so then there was a time like acha theek hai you have time till march or april and then you have to get a job because otherwise visa ka issue hoga though i was already on entre pass which is like out of nurial pass usse pehle i was on employment pass but okay. uh, entre pass ka alag alag nuances hai it's only for one year and all so i had to raise money in that one year to renew it and by that time we were only planning to start from singapore and go to other countries we were not actually planning much to do it in india because we realized ki there are, at least for that idea we did not even have good data here to build upon okay. so 
सो बट देन फॉर माई फैमिली इट वॉज लाइक ठीक है तुम्हें जो करना है करो साइड बाई साइड नौकरी देखो सो देन एवरी एवरी डे वन डे वन आवर आई वॉज अपलाइंग फॉर जॉब and then i got and then i got the job and maine kafi usme now when i'm on the other side as an employer i feel how bad i did <laughs> so i got the job i was negotiating and unnecessarily trying to delay because i the by the time we had entered into antler and antler mein hamara ic was scheduled in april uh, and then april mein hoga uske baad hame pata chalega whether we are getting it or not and that, for this job that i got that i had to join in april but i was just trying ki ha main thoda delay kar do delay kar do because i really wanted to get uh, money from antler and then antler wala delay ho gaya ye bol ke ki uh, covid happened and then they're like ki now we can't do it in april uh, we don't have our uh, no, uh, those part limited partners and all that so we can only do it in june or july and then i'm like i can't do this we just cannot afford to do this i have to do it now then they said okay let's do one thing uh, they had another ic committee of previous batch on in march on march 23rd and we had joined antler on 1st of march so okay. they were like then they clearly said see the thing is we, we you have just joined it and i don't think you are ready at all to you know go for the ic now but if this is the best option we can offer you because if you can't wait till june this is what you have to do and we were like ab kya kare and then it was really very stressful time ki ab i don't want to go for the job dheeraj is also figuring out kya matlab how will he manage because he also has to manage his uh, finances and all that at singapore is very expensive and then from there we are like ki, okay let's see this is the final chance we have to make it happen there is no way we can afford to lose this but on the other hand all the partners in antler who have who have seen us only for two weeks they are like ki nahi you are too early you are not ready and That is the difference in EF and Antler. EF me na they were appreciating your deep tech knowledge. Antler doesn't care. Antler is like business kaha hai, and wo business knowledge ham dono me se kisi ke pas nahi thi. So Antler was like ki tum business ko founder leke aao. Tum dono ka sab sahi hai, but tum business ko founder leke aao. We were like ki hum mein koi acha milega, we will get. We are open to the person, but we can't forcefully get somebody. And then luckily. just two days before our ic they were like okay let's do a mock pitch and then we did that it was so horrible so horrible our partner was like i do i don't see even 1% chance you will make it but then he gave us lot of feedback and then hmm. we had to change our slide we had to change our story and our pitch is in like next 36 hours but then we spent entire time making changes and we tried okay theek hai jo jo feedback diya a to z sab kuch sab kuch change kar do it was like a feedback as simple as uh, so when we did our mock pitch we started our story as that there is this patient who got diagnosed or uh, who who had a missed diagnosis that's how the story started one question from the partner was is the patient singaporean or indian oh <laughs> because that is why system ko kaise tum bol sakte ki missed diagnosis kiya hmm. and then even like hmm. each and everything sensitive thing we will keep in mind so humne accordingly sare changes kiye and then we like okay let's just go all in then we went to pitch and touch you and luckily it just it just happened it it went well uh, who all were there so generally it's like you have to get eight uh, so there are 10 partners who are there from multiple investors they call and the eight have to say yes so we that's when you get it otherwise uh, uh, if you get like 6 out of 6 to 8 then it's like a they you have to do again but okay. then luckily we got eight yes so we were like okay let's let's do it so that's how it, it just happened it was like we had no no hopes that we'll be able to do it but hmm. then it we just uh, got lucky and that's when and then antler actually started appreciating our effort and then they were like okay i don't think you guys need anyone you guys, we just need to give you feedback and you will do it so that so our perception changed and like ha bas aap feedback do so then our partner was like he was sitting with us every week every four to five days he was spending two three hours with us one on one that was very kind of him so like i know you guys need this and hame bhi chahiye gyan chahiye do sab gyan do <laughs> and that's how it started so that was our first fundraise but then after that us this idea pe they had put money was for the diagnosis but then covid had happened and then we had to pivot and then we pivoted to remote monitoring and again i was very uh, you know uh, i was very it was my first experience and i was feeling guilty that you know uh, we took money for this but then we pivoted so hmm. i just, I, i kind of became very stressed and then i called my partner and he said it's okay it's very normal you don't have to feel bad so it's it's just part now this is going to happen even more often you are going to pivot lot of times but like theek hai but then for this idea we didn't really have 
much we didn't have a solid product we had like a very basic product and we were working with couple of uh, two three hospitals for covid so we realized ki we won't be able to raise like a proper seed round with this and we don't have enough traction and we don't know what else after covid but then we thought okay let's apply to yc so that was our first time we applied to yc but yeah, yc wali application was more like ki ha bhi ye yc wala application karna hai ab usko kaise karna hai kaise karna hai kuch nahi pata it's first experience and so this was in 2020 right during lockdown right. during covid okay yeah so we just talked to a lot of people who had done this i spent one i spent 40 days on my application <laughs> I okay like, i was like i wanted to make it so perfect and then since i came from this research background all my answers were like thesis and i had a hard time cutting down cutting them down to the point बिकॉज आदत ही नहीं है पांच साल तुम्हारा ट्रेनिंग ऐसे हुआ है कि पहले तुम इंट्रोडक्शन दो पूरा बैकग्राउंड दो देन यू कम टू द यहां पे इट वाज अदर ग्राउंड यू हैव टू पुट द कंक्लूजन फर्स्ट देन यू टॉक अबाउट अदर थिंग्स सो दैट वाज अ हार्ड टाइम लर्निंग फॉर मी आई हैड रियली हार्ड टाइम लर्निंग दैट बिकॉज़ आई हैड टू अनलर्न व्हाट आई वाज यूज्ड टू एंड लर्न अगेन करेक्ट दैट वाज अगेन वाज अ गुड एक्सपीरियंस सो दैट्स हाउ वी जस्ट अप्लाइड टू आईसी पूरा उसमें कहानी लिखा हमने क्या किया क्या नहीं किया आई थिंक दैट वाज गुड एंड या वी जस्ट हैड आवर वाइस इंटरव्यू द इंटरव्यू वाज इन दिसंबर एंड दैट्स वी गॉट इनटू वाईसी एंड देन आफ्टर वाईसी द रियल स्ट्रगल फॉर फंड रेजिंग स्टार्टेड बिकॉज़ वी थॉट हाउ वाईसी का पूरा एक पोर्ट्रेट होता है ना कि दिस इज ऑल लाइक वेरी इजी फंड रेजिंग दिस एंड दैट बट इट वाजंट द केस फॉर अस सो दैट्स व्हेन आई रियलाइज्ड कि ये पूरा जो फोमो है ये पूरा जो एनवायरनमेंट है कि वाईसी 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 इज ग्रेट वाईसी कम्युनिटी इज ग्रेट बट इट डजंट मीन दैट एवरीबॉडी विल रेज मिलियंस एंड मिलियंस बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड टू फंड रेज वी रियलाइज्ड फर्स्टली वी वर टू अर्ली वी हैड नो हमारा कैंसर का प्रोडक्ट वी डिड नॉट हैव लाइक वी हैड वेरी बेसिक एमवीपी वी हैड मेजर प्रॉब्लम वाज there was no successful company to look at for investors they like in fintech may we have seen so many companies uh, healthcare may we have seen b2c medicine like pharmacy ho gaya prestige ho right. gaya b2c companies right. whenever hospital comes into picture they are meant to fail and even investors told us their own you know uh, learnings from investing in some of the companies before which was also very new for us so that was again an eye opener where you realized ki acha fundraising is not just getting a tag it's really about you know having a clarity on how you will win if somebody if people have failed how you will win and we did not actually have this idea ki ha so many people have failed because of this reason okay and that's when, okay. so that was new it so it took us long time and then also we were pre product we were like almost had no product we had first mvp for cancer which we did not know how it will scale because it was not meant to scale it was more like do things that don't scale we literally took that advice and then from uh, we, we we raised money but then we still raised like a small amount little less than million we raised from howard seed capital that's by howard business school uh, okay. and then okay. we raised from uh, pravega ventures in india and couple of others so but then they were we were lucky to have some people who believe that okay this this is solving a problem a big problem adoption is slow because it is new concept here in us it is still a very valid concept because insurance company pays to the hospital only when the hospital has proven that they have taken care of the patient even outside the hospital Got so it. that is called value yeah. based system but that is not the case in india nobody cares when the patient goes home doctor pura right. bolte hame nahi padta hame hamare paas time nahi hai which is a good thing to wahi hai ki we had problems in adoption and then wo kuch time mein i think may june last year was the time jab mai i was literally so stressed out because i'm trying to fund this it's not going the way we expected there are so many problems and we have no solution we don't know how to how much time it will take for us to solve those and then you know i'm just seeing around ki ha logo ne itna paisa utha liya utna paisa utha liya it is so easy to go in that you know uh, just get depressed by looking around and right. then i i was like extremely stressed and then mm-hmm. i just ping i just dropped an email to michael sibel that i want to talk um and i should do the meeting with him and that was i could not i did not get a chance to talk to him in yc but i i talked to him in that day and then he asked me he just told me one thing that you know you have money for xyz months why are you worried about raising money because first you need to focus on your users and then second thing i want to tell you most of these startups that raise so much money initially they will end up die if you have less money it will set your culture right it will set your priorities right don't worry if you don't have 3 4 millions you have enough money you can make things happen then he started giving me some examples and that half an hour with him was like so 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 positive suddenly it felt like he 
मैं क्या बेवकूफों की तरह पागल हो रही हूँ मतलब क्या ही फर्क पड़ रहा है चिल करो अपना काम करो एंड देन इट जस्ट चेंज माई माइंड सेट वेरी नेक्स्ट सेकेंड आई डोंट नो हाउ बट आई जस्ट नॉट वरिंग अबाउट यू नो गेटिंग वरिड की हाँ हमने नहीं उठाया ये नहीं किया वो नहीं किया देर वॉज अ टाइम वाले की जब आईसी की कंपनी हो अभी तुमने इतना ही उठाया है because that's how people were judging even investors asked us this then we told okay. then i just started giving very clear answer that these are the investors i have talked to this is the this is the concern and this is our plan and that started generating a better trust so we realized ki this entire journey it's not like a it's it's not a sprint it's a marathon jaisa bolte hai na like right right it's really it's really really you know everything happens on its own pace you can't compare yourself to a fintech or to a e-commerce startup you cannot even compare yourself to another healthcare startup everybody has their own journey on learnings so we like okay let's just focus on your own work don't get distracted i stopped looking at announcements <laughs> so that is how it was but yeah, now i i have better also i made lot of mistakes while talking to investors sometime i realized i took calls when i was not prepared Okay. And also, I took calls with investors when I was like extremely tired. I was not in my hundred percent, you know, in that zone. Mm-hmm. And it was better to reschedule them because sometimes it came across uh, as either having no clarity or, or sometimes as not having confidence. Whereas I had all the answers. <clears throat> so I think that happened initially. So now I take it like more like, "Hi, investors, we will talk about it. We will talk about it." Initially, earlier it was like your investor ka call hai. So ah. that feel was there in in some in at least in the first five ten calls. So after that, it I think it it became better. But ha, huh, I think that's a mistake that everybody makes. Right, right. So, abhi tak in total kitti funding raise kari hai Zelth ne? So in total we have raised around seven uh, hundred k. Okay, and would you also like to share the valuation? We try to try to keep it confidential if you don't okay. mind. Can you share But the range? हाँ मैं वही बता ऑन एन एवरेज वाईसी कंपनी का एट दिस स्टेज दे द रेंज वेरीज़ फ्रॉम लाइक एट टू ट्वेल्व मिलियन ओके एट टू ट्वेल्व मिलियन पोस्ट मनी हाँ गॉट इट गॉट तो अब आपके पेरेंट्स को कैसा लगता है अरे उनको भी कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता दे आर लाइक ऑन पेपर है सैलरी तो तुम आज भी नहीं उठाते <laughs> मेरे पेरेंट्स को जरूर लगता है कि पहले तो खुश नहीं थी अभी तो काम करके स्ट्रेस भी है तो भी तेरे चेहरे पे खुशी है पहले व्हेन आई वाज वर्किंग इन सिंगापुर सम कंपनीज आई वाज वेरी हैप्पी आई वाज हैप्पी विद द कल्चर आई वाज हैप्पी विद द वे थिंग्स वर स्पेशली विद द डाइवर्सिटी यू नो एंड द with different races and all so even that was something i wanted to make sure na mere ko hamesha lagta tha ki jis din mai ek apna banaungi aur jis din mai boss hongi mai is tarah ka culture nahi rakhungi what kind of culture i want to keep so i think that was also something that now we always prioritize on we have had you know we have had discussion between me and here is that what kind of experiences we don't want but we okay. went through we don't want our employees to went through so let's make some some rules and some you know values according to that so i think that was also good in that sense ki khud ko pata hai ki kya cheez nahi karni hai right right to chaliye ab team building ke upar hi baat karte hain jaisa aapne culture ki baat kari so like based upon your experience uh, what is the thing that defines a company's culture and what do we exactly mean by culture when we use this word culture mere ko bhi lagta tha kya hota hai company culture company culture it's really about you know uh, at the very core of it it's like the principles that define uh, for example let's say i'll give you example when you are growing up right every family they have like i come from like my dad is an as a army person so he is very disciplined and all that unko lagta hai to that is like unka hamare ghar ka culture ki kuch bhi ho subah uth ke yoga karna hai like okay. discipline right so discipline i would put as a culture baki okay. tumhe jo karna hai ho you are uh, independent so similarly company with a certain values that you are very clear on ki they, they are non negotiables for example in our case we are we were very clear ki we would give equal opportunity to the employees to speak up okay. because that is some i faced and i thiraj also faced ki in in our experiences sometimes based on ki ha tum kaun se position pe ho and based on tumhare upar kon hai you are whatever you are saying your things are not being valued and that is something even when we interview people people and we ask ki why do you want to leave people say ki meri cheezon ko utna value nahi kiya jata hai so right. that that is a part of culture where do cheeze ho sakti hai ya to tumhari cheezon ko value nahi kiya ja raha kyunki it's not really relevant to the business or Correct. so that 
बट दैट इवन इफ इट्स नॉट रेलिवेंट दैट मैसेजिंग शुड बी क्लियर टू द एम्प्लॉय की हाँ वाई दिस इज नॉट बींग वैल्यूड वाई दिस इज नॉट कंसिडर्ड so and at the end we person should feel that whatever contribution they are doing is actually significant so that was the first thing we wanted to make sure that we will build a we will build a family but but a sports team where you, everybody it. is working towards the goal but everybody is helping each other with one aim in mind and they know at the individual level they are contributing enough so that is the first thing we want to make sure that team individual they form the team team forms the company grow individually help each other help everyone in your team grow and then you will grow as a company so be open minded be communicate whatever you want to say chahe tumhe mere se kuch problem hai dheere se kuch whatever you want to feel you you feel ki i need to improve come and tell me very openly so like open communication something and respect for everyone making sure everybody is being valued enough that is the very core of culture that we believe uh, we have in ourselves and that we want to uh, build upon sometimes what happens is uh, as the company grows right now we have say 15 full time people and other part time if we don't give this message clearly so, two saal baad eight saal baad when the other person becomes a manager the way they will treat the person under them and then the way they will start uh, treating the person under them wo pura ek aisa it's like a chain reaction wo a pass on hota jayega so right. making sure ki everybody is aware at this stage ki what how you have to treat your employees or how you have to manage the people under you and putting everything in a very constructive feedback manner not like ki full time dant rahe hain i try i try to avoid that as much as possible mere se zyada mere ko nahi daantna hota hai because it's like everybody is doing their best you need to put them into the right direction so give them constructive feedback it should all it's as simple as ki ha tumhe lag raha hai ki is bande ne kuch kaam nahi kiya hai to don't go and shout ki tumne kuch kaam nahi kiya hai tell ki dekho tum bahut smart ho tum bahut talented ho you are not making use of your talent you are not growing because tum ye nahi kar pa rahe ho maybe tumhe aise aise karna chahiye so it's really about how you give the feedback you should not be making the other person feel ki ha tum to kisi kaam ke hi nahi ho hmm. so that is Got that it. is that all these things are a part of culture basically how you treat right. people always like in a positive manner where the person should grow you should grow personally at a personal level when you join company a year ago versus now with company have if you see you had your personal growth that's a successful culture if you feel ki you did not grow personally that's a failure so that is how i would put it wow that's that's really a, an interesting perspective and jo aapne bola na like that was like completely spot on because like mai bhi jaise apne senior se baat karta hu ya fir mai batchmate se baat karta hu who are currently doing internships at different places in different startups to ek major concern yahi hota hai ki mai jo unko batana cha raha hu mere manager ko most of the times my things are not heard properly mujhe proper feedback nahi milta mai agar kuch galti kar raha hu to proper mujhe batate nahi hai where i am wrong how should i improve तो वो कम्युनिकेशन वाली चीज दैट वाज दैट इज रियली रियली इंपॉर्टेंट एज यू मेंशन राइट राइट भाई क्योंकि अनलेस वी गेट द कम्युनिक बिकॉज़ आई 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 फेस द सेम प्रॉब्लम अनलेस आई न्यू आई वाज नॉट डूइंग थिंग्स राइट बिकॉज़ आई डिड नॉट हैव द राइट डायरेक्शन बट आई वाज नॉट गिवन द राइट डायरेक्शन सेइंग कि हम हमने तो ये किया ही नहीं आई विल इंप्रूव ओनली इफ आई नो कि मैंने कहां गलती कर दी है सो मेकिंग श्योर कि तुम सही बता रहे हो दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइट राइट बिकॉज़ आवर एक्सपेक्टेशंस आर ऑलवेज हियर एंड पीपल आर नॉट गोइंग टू फुलफिल दैट but if people are here our job it's my job as a manager to take it from here to there right right okay so monica now i would like to know from you that what are the some of the major challenges that you feel are very specific to this healthcare industry uh challenges in terms of uh one challenge that i see is definitely adoption especially okay. if you're working at a you know uh hospital level बिकॉज हॉस्पिटल्स में क्या होता है इफ यू आर एट हॉस्पिटल्स में भी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ हॉस्पिटल्स है प्राइवेट इज डिफरेंट पब्लिक इज डिफरेंट सेमी प्राइवेट इज डिफरेंट वर्सिस क्लिनिक्स आर ऑल टूगेदर डिफरेंट विथ ईच विथ एवरी स्टेक होल्डर दैट कम्स इन इट बिकम्स इवन मोर डिफिकल्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर अस फॉर कैंसर वी वर्क विथ हॉस्पिटल्स बिकॉज कैंसर में नो बडी गोज टू अंकोलॉजिस्ट का क्लिनिक एवरीबडी गोज टू अ बिग हॉस्पिटल की टी एम सी जाएंगे टाटा जाएंगे एम्स जाएंगे वो सब क्योंकि दैट इज वेयर यू नो द बेस्ट ट्रीटमेंट इज एंड इट्स अ मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी ट्रीटमेंट बस एक कीमो वाले से लेके बात नहीं चलेगी यू माइट नीड टू गो फॉर सर्जरी यू माइट नीड टू गो फॉर रेडिएशन सो दैट इज वाई लाइक अ हॉस्पिटल लेवल अब हॉस्पिटल्स को तुम कैसे इंसेंटिवाइज कर रहे हो वहां पे देर आर सो मेनी स्टेक होल्डर्स इन्वॉल्व इवन डॉक्टर इज वन देन ऑपरेशन टीम के बंदे हैं वो हैं फिर आईटी uh, साइड uh, के लोग हैं 
फिर ग्राउंड लेवल पे जो रिसेप्शनिस्ट है वो है फिर उनके जो ओवर केयर मैनेजर्स है लाइक एंडलेस नंबर ऑफ पीपल हु आर इन्वॉल्व इन द प्रोडक्ट नाउ यू हैव टू इंसेंटिवाइज ऑल ऑफ देम टू यूज द प्रोडक्ट एंड टू मेक श्योर टू गेट देयर पेशेंट्स टू यूज द प्रोडक्ट तो वहां पे क्या होता है विद एवरी न्यू स्टेक होल्डर दैट एड्स इन it becomes more complicated sometimes there are so many ego clashes see like this is something i learned hard way it's like we we thought ki ha ye doctor to padmashri hai iske naam se we can get more more doctors but only we realize when you actually talk about and give the name sometimes tumhe nahi pata ki samne wale doctor ki to usse banti nahi hai and that, so there are like so many challenges especially in the adoption side where there are so many stakeholders involved so incentivizing right. it becomes one challenge which actually affects your sales cycle because okay. now you have on an average if you are working with a clinic your sales cycle might be one to two months with every stakeholder ad that comes in stay, uh, your sales cycle becomes like easily six to nine months and then if you are working in a government setting you have a ethics committee where you have to give proposal phir ethics committee ke paas jayega wo tumse hazar question puchhenge and ethics committee bhi aisa nahi hai ki regular hoti hai week uh, month mein ek baar hoti hai to wo meeting hogi next month mein reply aayega uske next month mein tum wapas reply bhejoge phir wo wapas to 4 mahine to matlab inefficient hai pura process inefficient hai so like okay. the time that it takes uh, to get into hospital is, is big or is really really long and then it's adoption is really slow unko lagta hai ki uh, all these apps are either useless or they are just going to replace them so okay. that 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 mindset is also very difficult to change especially for those people the younger ones are very you know uh, proactive in uh, using such technologies the new okay. doctors the young doctors but if i look at uh, those who are highly experienced 60% of them are not open to using technology okay like the i can tell you one day experience we went to a hosp- very big hospital i won't name it in, in mumbai and they have this amazing doctor there who's like super popular in the entire world so and i came across her name i thought kin se to milna hai to bahut jugad maar ke kahan kahan se friend ke papa ke kahan kahan se to jugad maar ke unka number nikalwaya and email nikalwaya fir reference deke email dala and we were very early stage hamare paas kuch nahi tha hum bas milne jana chahte the taki baat kar sake hmm I don't know कि उनको क्या perception था We went and then she probably thought कि हम बस product के साथ आए या कुछ तो and then she was like okay show me your product हमने दिखाया and हमने बोला कि हम early stage हैं हम ये ये कर रहे हैं then she was like and this was for the AI for diagnosis okay then she was like I have forty years of experience what your AI will tell me <laughs> and then we started to answer ki matlab aise aise kuch edge edge cases hote hain jahan pe ai is better this and that this and that and then dheeraj was answering that so another 15 minutes unhone dheeraj ka pura viva le liya ki yes kaisa kitna accuracy kitna ye kitna wo fir uske baad she came to me like oh you have phd in in cancer acha batao iska kya hota hai i was like unhone mere se half an hour baith ke pura ka pura it felt like mera phd was much easier <laughs> Entire one hour we sat with her and it was like हम सोच रहे हम क्या कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे and like she had no interest in the product it just it just came across as कि uh, she just felt कि मतलब वो उनको वो इतनी experienced है उनको क्या ही बच्चे लोग हैं क्या ही इनको पता है hmm. so and uh, not everybody would be like that but हाँ that is one thing that we realized कि हाँ तो मतलब यहाँ पे जो बहुत well known doctors हैं उनका उनके through adoption कराना is important but at the same time is the most challenging part हमें लगा था okay. कि अगर ये डॉक्टर ने हाँ कर दिया तो इट विल इट विल ओपन लॉट ऑफ लॉट ऑफ अदर डोर्स फॉर अस बट देन मोर एंड मोर वी टॉक टू सच हाई फाई डॉक्टर्स वी रियलाइज की इट्स नॉट वर्थ इट लेट्स गो टू पीपल हु आर एक्चुअली रिलेटिवली यंगर न्यू टू द फील्ड वही लोग हैं हु आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू बी योर अर्ली यूजर्स सो अडोप्शन दैट दैट वॉज वन थिंग अनदर पार्ट अनदर चैलेंज इन हेल्थ केयर इज not sure how much it is a concern right now in india but in singapore it's a patient data privacy and security okay. it's like a huge problem there like it's if you ask me one reason why we started in india and not in singapore this was the reason we okay. needed so many compliances for patient data that it would take us easily one and a half year to just reach those com- get those compliances and after that only we can start hipa compliance or and what not so that's how those are some of the challenges and uh, one more is like patient awareness uh, making sure that patients are aware uh, unko symptoms hain bhi to unko da unko app mein dal ke kya benefit mil raha hai or even hmm. making sure that they understand ki why they should put symptom at the first place 
or they should even be concerned about it that hmm. that awareness is missing got it got it okay so monica we are almost at the end of this podcast thank you so much for giving your time any last piece thank of advice you would like to give to people who are uh, aiming to start up in the near future just one advice is start up man don't wait just start okay. <laughs> just start once you start you will have all the things unfolding organically otherwise you'll keep thinking ki pehle main ye karunga aur tab main ye karunga this and that that's not going to work i have done that there is never a perfect time you have to jump into it you have to take leap of faith everything else will happen so got it yeah. got it perfect thank you so much thank you so much for your time thank you, thank you so much for that